we're talking about a subject tonight that's actually very emotional, complicated, um, and it's actually at the prompting of one of our viewers that we decided to have this show. I got an email some months back that specifically requested that we talk about DNA, but not just about DNA, because we've had plenty of shows that talked about DNA before. But this particular viewer really wanted us to address DNA from the perspective of people who had experienced finding out that a parent that they were told was their parent was not their biological parent. And after talking to more than a few people to see who would be willing to talk about this on the record, because this is a complicated topic, it's very emotional, it's a lot of just, a lot of things involved with it. Um, there were a few folks who were willing to go on the record to talk about their experience having gone through this entire thing. And everyone who you'll be hearing from in this particular episode um, is, is first person. These are folks that have dealt with these scenarios directly. Of course, we're going to have someone here who can help us process through the emotions um, and just some of the psychological aspects of the story as well, or just these experiences as well. I'm going to introduce Alvis Ward, um, who will be joining us to talk about his experience. Dr. Rosalind Newton, who has been on the show previously. Um, she worked with us in discussing um, self-care for genealogists, family history researchers with different, you know, dealing with difficult subjects, Sharon Jones and Gloria Lucas. At the time, 23andMe was giving away the free test to the homes and I think it was two to a family. So as a result of it, um, I took one and my husband took one. And then I started to get all of these hits of family members, but it was nobody I recognized. And I'm thinking, well, you know, my family isn't out there. What's going on? And upon that, my aunt wanted me to do a trace of their family. And I say my birth aunt. No, my given aunt, that's how I call it. Given aunt and given dad. And upon that, um, when my dad, given dad, wanted me to use his DNA for it, that's when I realized, hey, he's not my dad. I was curious about my heritage, you know, what did I have in me? And that was the only reason why I did it. I mean, because I knew, I, I thought I knew who my family was. So when I got it, I was excited to see I had uh, Ghana and, and uh, Malin all mixed in me. And I noticed I seen all them people, but I was like, I ain't, you know, I'm just like, I didn't know what they, you know, I didn't know what it meant. And the next thing you know, I got that phone call from Derek. <laughs> and I thought it was a joke. Then I talked to you the next day, and you the one made everything come together. DNA testing started out as just a way to move beyond the brick walls and the and, and the black holes um, for my family research, and that was the main purpose initially for the DNA testing was to get further ahead um, and discovery. Did any, either of you have any indication that the information in your results was going to be different than what you expected? No. I always felt that I didn't quite fit. One of the things was I'm short. Everybody else is tall. I was high yellow. They were all dark. Um, my given dad had that gray hair. I didn't. And it, so I started asking my mother questions about um, what is it? What's the difference? And then once I went to the hospital where he was um, hospitalized and I said, came home, I said, mom, how could his blood type make my blood type? And of course my mother just kept brushing it off. She, she had ample time to tell me that that man was not my father. Yeah. So once again, when I kept doing all this research and looking at his family, everybody's skinny. I wasn't. So it was like, what, what, if something's not adding up, something's not adding up. And then of course I had my aunt that would say, you know, that man ain't none of your daddy, you know, in a joking kind of way. So I didn't believe them because his sisters were saying, uh, you look just like our mom. So I'm going to believe them, of course. But once again, I just had the gut feeling something wasn't right.
Now I didn't have no clue. You know, no clue. Well, what happened was in 13 of October, I administered the test to my, my given dad and November, I got the results. I shared it with no one because he didn't match me until January around my birthday. I shared it with my husband. I lost my husband that May. Oh, so yeah. I kept that. I had nobody else to talk to. I just kept it to myself. So I went to my mother and upon going to my mother, I asked her, who am I? I am not a wife. I'm not uh, a daughter of, of AD, which is what he was called. And my mother got so angry at me because she stopped speaking to me for five years. Five years. And we just started speaking in the end of last year. I, I thought it was a dream. I couldn't believe it. And, and now, as I steady meet new members in my family, it's like an ongoing dream. And I have so many members of my family that I haven't met and I don't know. You know, that's just, you know, it's just so it's still, it's still ongoing. But I'm glad it happened though, you know. But I wish I would have had a chance to meet Frank and just grew up with y'all, you know. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. Only because I lived my whole life knowing one thing, never questioning my paternity, never being none the wiser or an inkling that something was off. Well, let me take that back. Let me roll that back one. I was in an event. I was at a family repast. And I remember one day standing in the corner eating a piece of cake in a um, white paper plate over in the corner off to myself. And my mother walked over and said, get that look off your face. And I'm like, what look? And she was like, like everybody has crap on them. You know, but what I was doing in that moment while I was eating that cake, I was in my head saying, oh my God, surely God wouldn't do this to me. I cannot be from these people. It, I just can't. And that was a light bulb that came on where I first ever questioned whether I belonged with my paternal side of the family. And so true to form, um, from this DNA test, it revealed that, hey, I am not a part of the people. These tests are readily available on Amazon. You can literally buy a test anywhere. Target has them on the shelf. They go home by themselves without a support group, test themselves, and whoo, now my life has changed and I'm by myself. Um, so, you know, I, I'd say that the best thing um, is to have that, 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 uh, cohort around you that can support you, allow you to be um, completely transparent with what you feel because it's so heavy to, and if I'm talking to a parent about it, knowing that, you know, maybe there was, this was information that they didn't share with me, can I truly be transparent? And I think if you think about the African-American community and this level of reverence we're supposed to have for the elders in our family, there are certain things we that are not safe to talk about. Oh, you know, and so navigating that process is, is too heavy. Um, and so, you know, having, even if it's only a few people that you can truly be transparent with, because in that grieving process, you have varying stages. You're going to be mad, at, you know, extremely upset. And you need to have that safe space to, to work through that and, and not have to then manage the emotions of another person. I began to do the research of looking for my biological father. And no lie, the Lord helped me in many ways. He would tell me, direct me, go here, go there, call this person. Members of the African American Genealogical Society um, that are in a close circle with us, um, Nika and I, um, actually bought me other DNA tests. You know, they became my allies. They became my, um, my release, my, um, I couldn't tell my, I couldn't tell family, you know, um, it was, it was a royal family that came forward to help me um, because I didn't have the vocabulary. I did not have the, I did not have the esprit de corps. I didn't have anything to, you know, to give to 
people in my surrounding because I couldn't trust anybody. I didn't know who may have known and who just didn't tell me, who were just being nice to me and, you know, just getting along to get along. You know, I didn't know both maternal or paternal as I knew it sides of my family. I only had the, those that were new to me and that was my genealogy society that were, that was the royal family. They were the outsiders that helped me along. I couldn't even talk to the people in my church because I didn't know, because people are connected and interconnected to people who knew people in my other parts of my family that they might tell, you know, that they might leak something and I wasn't ready to have the dialogue, or excuse me, woo, or the conversation. And eight years later, I'm still not there. I think that, of course, everyone has their own experience. Um, but I think, first and foremost, just dealing with it in, in and of yourself is going to be the, the greatest challenge. Um, because once you take it beyond yourself, you have to then process all these other experiences all into one. And it just it causes so much more pressure. And I was almost very careful not to push because I said she could shut down and not tell me anything, nor my mother. Do I really want to know all of this? Because there could be something that is deeper, deeply rooted that I don't want to know the answer to. And I don't want to be a, the trigger for my mother because the DNA test did prove she is my mother. I do no harm, I'm not trying to harm her. But at the same time, I need to know what I need to know. And who, who should I be concerned with at this point? Do I be concerned with you as my mother and you not having a heart attack, or, you know, just falling out, losing your mind, or me having the heart attack, falling out, losing my mind? Then it became self-preservation and everybody for themselves. And that's how I freed myself to move forward and to find some kind of balance in this crazy, you know, crazy reality that has now materialized in front of me because I'm dealing with this and I'm like, you know, mm -mm. it's not just an experience that you're having. Um, this experience is, ha is having a, a grave impact on your identity. You know, your, you know, your personal identity, your familial identity, uh, what it means for you to, you know, move forward with your life and, um, this relationship that you've had, will you have to sever ties with this person? Maybe the shame, uh, shame, guilt, uh, and embarrassment. Like there's so many uh, levels. There's, there's no right or wrong way. Um, and uh, this sense of not being able to trust because I, we, we have this unsaid ex expectation that we'd be able to trust, you know, our media. Like if you don't have your family, who do you have? And now I'm, that foundational level of trust has been threatened, if you will. So my auntie actually believed him. Well, you really believe that DNA? I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, but I'm supposed to not believe. It's just kind of crazy, though, you know. The family, I done told, they, they was in denial until I showed them Frank's picture that I showed y'all. And they believe it, but like far as my mother said, I haven't seen her since. Well, the center of this story suggested that it's not real, that the DNA test is not real. Mine's is really, it's still ongoing now, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, I, I know my mother not, I don't think she mad at me, I don't think. But I know she's still with that in denial type deal, so I just don't even bring it up. Cause I figured like we can have a duck conversation, like, hey mom, can you tell me what happened? And she said, I never touched this man. But I think what it is more on my mom end, because I don't think her and my uh, given father was together, but I think my mother's more ashamed how I went down. I don't need her to complete me, you know, because I, I know the truth. We were kind of split. Mm -hmm. um, my, if I, I have to speak on my siblings, my male, I have four brothers by my mother and one sister. 
Well, my brothers were like all for me. As a matter of fact, two of them tested to help me locate who my dad was. Mm -hmm. My sister, because my mother was not speaking to me, completely shut down and stopped speaking to me as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a divided family. If there was a function, only half of us would be there. Either they would be there or I would be there. I revealed it in the presence of elders. I learned a long time ago that women know how to talk to women. I then said, I have something I want to say, and I don't know if my mom wants to hear this. She may want to leave the room. And my great aunt said, well, you know, looked at my mother with her endearment name and said, would you like to stay in the room or would you like to leave? We need to hear what Junior has to say. And I'm Alvis Ward Junior. So she, my mother said, no, I'll stay. So I quickly moved my chair closer to the door. And I had the conversation. I said, Paul, not Paul. I said, I took a DNA test and it revealed that my father was not my father. And my great uncle by marriage says to her, <laughs> well, you know, the test is only 99.9%. <laughs> you know, just believe in the point one. I said, my aunt told him to stay out of it. My great aunt said, you need to stay out of this. It's not just the, the death of who you thought you were and your identity, but it's the death of the idea of who your parents are. Right. And yes. who your mother was. Yes. Right. Like, you oh know, even, God. even if your mother is, you know, I don't know, is that, you know, whatever perception you have of your mom, um, a lot of people's perceptions are altered or shifted as a result of getting information like this. And the, yeah. the, the, the death of you, the death of her, your idea of her, that's why I think some parents in this scenario push back so hard on it is because they don't want that idea of them to die, that so they help to shape, you know, for their children, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I helped shape mm -hmm. this idea of who I am to you. And mm -hmm. now you're challenging what that is. And I don't want that to die because I don't, I don't want you to, to know who, who the real right. person is. Right. And, and it's not like we'll judge or we'll dismiss or we'll push away the real person, but the fear that we might is just that, that, that strong. You grew up with your brother and you didn't know your brother was your brother. You thought your brother was a family friend, right? Like mm -hmm. expl explain that. Cause that, that's a lot to process at one time. You no, know, how can I explain it? Uh, see me and Derek, we always, Looked at each other being there, cause you know, you know, you know, it's bad when you been knowing somebody so long that you don't remember when y'all met. So it was always like he always been family anyway. So now it's just, oh, I can't even explain it with him. It just it connects, you know. Mm -hmm. Now I think the only person kind of have a problem with, like I said, is my mother, you know. But then like like my other brother, he's cool with it, and you know. And then see, I always had the type of family anyway. They always wanted outside. But I think when it came down to me and the way it failed, it was like, you know. But I don't know, but I'm embracing it. I love it though. And then I like the I like y'all side of the family. It's more of me, you know. I love how he just takes it in stride and it's like, I'm just gonna take what, what I can yeah. get and, Cause, cause and just go it, with it. And yeah, it's a whole new journey. It's a new life. Right. And I've always been a traveler, you know. I mean, I always moved around, you know, I'm a Freemason, you know, so I like that, and they got so much family that it's like a part of me that I didn't, I ain't know, you know. And then I'm finding out when I talk to Derek, I realize I act more like Frank. He be telling me certain things. I'm like, man, I ain't know that, you know. I'm still grieving the loss of Alvis Ward Jr. Um, what do I mean by that? That day, Alvis Ward Jr. died, and there was a rebirth. The whole Nicodemus. How can a man be born when he's old? John 3, you know, um, asking, with, with Jesus speaking, asking the question, you know, telling it, I, I tell the truth to you today. You know, a man cannot enter, enter the kingdom and only if he's born by what? By water and by spirit. And so I truly, there was a rebirth that happened that day. There was a death and there was a, ooh, and a resurrection, but at the same time, there was also grief um, that stepped in. There was also mourning, and I'm still mourning. There was weight gain, there was weight loss, there was more weight gain, there was 
it's 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 still a journey today because I don't have all the pieces. Um, all of the information is not readily to me. I stopped a whole what would appear to be a lifetime of decades, definitely more than a decade of research of one side of a family that's not my own to pick up the mantle to research a new, whole new family, to start from zero at age 42, and today I'm 50, to create, to find something completely different, to meet a people and have conversations with people that I've never developed a relationship with over decades. At 42, it's still a wonder to me. I, I and it's true. It, it, yeah, I'm still grieving. I, I'm still. I still have my moments where I pause in complete disbelief. With all my intelligence, with all my accolades, I I just stop and I say, you know, I I get it. Why not me? You know what sets me apart? But really. First of all, it was the hunt of knowing who he was. There was that frustration of knowing who he was. And now that that's all resolved, it's kind of like I'm at peace with it. Mm. I'm at peace, but I still want to know the rest of my family now. And, and I'm getting to know who they are and I'm getting to meet some of them. I had one to drive from um, Iowa just to meet me. Mm. And I thought that was awesome, you know. Um, my aunts, I have an aunt live in Florida, one live, two live in Mississippi, Kosciuszko. I've met all of them except for the one in Florida, you know, but I speak to her like almost every other day. So, yeah, I, I kind of, my feelings have changed because there's that acceptance. I wasn't rejected by the, the most important people to me. I mean, it was just because the, the fulfillment of knowing who I was. Mm. That that did it for me because me just losing my husband in 2014 and I found out in 13 that he wasn't my dad. So mm -hmm. it was like now I'm out here and I don't want to run up on a brother or a cousin or whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that gave me such joy to know who I was. I was happy. If you have the resources, uh, therapy. You know, you have a person who is completely objective. They don't, they don't have a vested interest uh, in making it better, you know, or um, trying to incorporate the, the pressures of incorporating, well, you know, this was what was going on at the time. And, you know, because when you have other family members, it can get a little sticky because they try to, in, you know, well, you shouldn't be upset. I don't know. You, you don't want to ruffle feathers because some family members will tell you, well, this is not something you should bring up. It's going to upset too many people, although mm -hmm. it's your experience. Um, so, and, and absolutely, if you find that it's becoming too heavy, um, you know, and it's starting to evoke other, you know, uh, stressors, you're not able to focus, you're not able to be as um, productive in your life, um, it's really important that you reach out because these kinds of things can cause other issues to develop and you don't want to be dealing with that on your own. Going to meet him and um, everything was cool. He agreed to take the test. Um, we went outside, we talked, and he said that he didn't know my mother. No, I take that back. In the house, he didn't know my mother. When we went outside, memories just came flooding back to him. He knew everything about my mother. So when we got to communicating, pretty much, um, it changed. First, his wife was on board. Then she changed. Um, I became that woman, not his daughter, but we started praying um, for my father because of the situation he was in, because at this point, she had stopped me from seeing my father, and I explained to them, I didn't want anything from you all. I had my own money, house, cars. I don't want anything from you but to know who he is, 
And so when that happened, the Lord fixed it. He went to the hospital. We were able to see him. Now my daughter is requesting to know who her grandfather is. And I said, well, you know, you just got to pray about it. The Lord fixed it. Now my father is in a nursing home and we were going every week, twice a week to see him. And we were building a relationship with him. Unfortunately, now he has dementia. And I have moved from his daughter to a family member. I said, well, at least I'm a family member. You know, he still recognized me as that. Um, but in the process of all of it, I mean, I, I, I still give thanks to God that I got to know who he was. And I got to know who I am as a result of it. Because you yes. just went for DNA test? I mean, I wouldn't believe it. And I'm just glad my when my father, and my given father would have been alive, oh, it would have been a bit different. You know, so, but see, they both gone. So I'm like, mom, you know, come out of it. But I still haven't, like, told everybody in her family. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. How, how do you feel about your family that you grew up thinking were your cousins? How do you feel about that now? I, it don't change because I grew up with them. They always going to be, to me, blood, like, I always, always grew up thinking this. Everybody, every. We would say everybody in your family is not your kind, you know, because you know you got good family members you don't want to know. Yeah, right. Well, I can I can say, mean, they was there for me, like, and, and the thing about it, and see, this is the, the part that really hurt the most when everything settled in. My my Gibbons father, parents, like uh, his mother was like my mother for real, and see, she passed in two thousand five. I used to call her Dura. That's why I stayed with and everything. And so now when it hit, I mean, like, oh. I wasn't her grandchild. I wasn't her first. I was, I was, I was her first grandchild. So I thought. It's generational. You know, they were told things and they were told, you know, everything that happens in this house stays in this house. That whole mantra, that whole belief system of, you know, there are certain things that we just don't speak. You know, we know, but we don't say anything about it. You know, we just keep it all to the breastplate. You know, we're not going there. We're, we're just not going to talk about this. But how can you not not talk about it? You know what? I used to think that, but in that group, I was hearing, like I say, Caucasian people saying the same thing, mother denying it and won't admit it and cutting them off, you know, and they ain't talked to their mother in years. And I'm talking about, so I was like, oh, y'all aren't just like us, you know? I think so. I think we have, but I, I think it depends on your upbringing, though. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you got that loving, nurturing upbringing where you just accept everybody, because you can pick and choose who your family is mm -hmm. and make your family and love them better than the ones that are birthed into your family. Like you said, uh, Sharon, that you got some family members you don't even like. Mm -hmm. But you got the ones in the streets that will treat you better than the ones that you, yeah, that are exactly. born with. So mm -hmm. I think that it depends on how we were raised is how we accept it. Mm -hmm. You always hear this. Uh, back in the day, we didn't do this. Now y'all did do that. It just it wasn't it wasn't technology. <laughs> the bus, you know, and that's really what it is. Because it, to me, it, it, everything people doing now, they was doing back in the day. It was just behind closed doors, and people yeah, stayed yeah. together. You know, yep. you got busted and yep. he kept it in the house. Because I knew a lot of people that, hell, he had another house. Like my friend told me, yep. he was asking mama, where dad at? He said, mama, see, with his other family. You know, I mean, that went on. You know, like color purple stuff. That, that's just how that was. The person, the child, for example, it's going to be most shattering for them in repairing those relationships. Because we're constantly beating down um, our this this trust. It's, it's so the first shatter is mm. I find out mm. the news, right? right? And so the repair can go either way depending on how we how we deal with this information. And now I'm being inundated with all these different stories, probably because if you if you step back and you try to be objective and understand from her perspective, it's like, oh my God, how do I make this right? How do I justified you know because we're dealing with guilt and shame likely mm -hmm. um and and it's not just information that he has now now other people 
are brought in on that and what do I do with it, you know? Um, and <clears throat> quite frankly, many people don't know how to deal with their own emotions, right? And so it's going to be difficult for me to help you manage, you know, through this situation and being present with the truth. Um, so I, I think you, the person, the, the person um, that's in the situation, the child, for example, it's going to be most important for them uh, to be at peace with the direction in which they want to go. I, because if you, if we get too caught up on placating for my mom or for my dad or for my my siblings you know like it gets way too convoluted and it makes it it makes the process heavier we need to reduce stress pressure as much as possible what advice would you give people who encounter this situation just pray on it and it will get better and um I would never deny the truth. If so this is where I look at it. If if I know you lying to me, you insulted my intelligence. So really, you're only embarrassing yourself. You know that's why I look at it. You know, this is like I told my mother when everything went down. I said, "Mom, I love you, but I'm a man of science. You know, I'm not gonna go around and make you look like me. I'm not. You, I'm, I'm not gonna let you make me look like no idiot either. Because I look like a damn. Excuse me. Excuse me I look like a fool. Tell me, I don't believe that. I believe my mama. You know, I mean, you know, don't make yourself look silly. You know, they got you on tape doing something. It's a test, man. You did it. Just, you know, that's why I look at it. Because the more you lie about it, you just you kill your credibility as a person. That's why I look at it, you know. I mean, life goes on, you know. It's a new found, it's a new journey. That's the way I look at it. First of all, trust in God, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Have patience because it's not going to happen overnight that you're going to discover it. Even in your research, you're going to run up into brick walls. Um, you'll get frustrated. Have that one person that you can go to, to lean on, to boost you back up. Mm -hmm. And just know that this journey may take a year, two years, three years, mm -hmm. but don't give up. Don't give up the people time is of the essence and that's what others do not get and i'm saying to my and i'm looking and saying you know what got it the dna test has happened got it you've told me a story or two or three. Oh, but the other part of this is that is that other parent still alive that knows not of my existence wait a minute you tell me also in a version of the story i would be his first child does he have other children now? Hmm. If he's dead, you see what I'm saying? I need photos. I want to know of his life. I need, I need something other than just the test, the, the, the varying stories, you know what I'm saying? And the thought that maybe he's alive, maybe he's dead. Am I the oldest? Our grandparents still living, you know, whole nother, a whole group, a whole, just another life of information that I don't have time to play with you, number one. That's number one. Let's, let's put down all the games. I don't have time because I'll turn into something else. I'm older. I'm 42. Today, I'm 50, still processing and dealing with this. Because I know that I, there's still things that I have to decipher. There's still clues that I have to unravel. I understand that every moment is precious because the other side has not, they have not engaged me. They don't know of me, you know, to the 10th. I've met, you know, I'm having conversation, but the nucleus of where I'm trying to get to has not entertained my conversation, has not seen does not know my journey, you know, let alone my name, which is not their own, you know, it's, it's. It, because not everybody will respond the same way. So I don't want to say, you know, um, make sure you have access to mental health professionals to help you to process that because you may not, you may not, that may not be your experience. You may not need that. But um, I think the most important thing is having the strong support group to help you, to propel you in whichever direction you want to go once you have that information. I really wish there was like a best practice approach 
um, you know, in, in the field of psychology, when we deal with certain things, there are best practices for everything. Uh, and so I wonder if this is just an area or uh, within genealogy that has, that's untapped. You know, I wonder if it is, that's the, the next thing, you know, moving in direction where we have best practice approach or guidelines, if you will, if you're working with um, an individual who is finding this information finding out this information and, and how to forge ahead. One of the biggest things in working with individuals who come into newfound information that's, you know, shattering is that they don't want to feel as if they're alone. Like no one else, you know, I'm the only one who's, and surely, I mean, we rationally know we probably aren't the only one, um, but it is quite healing when you can connect with other people who have had the shared lived experience. Um, so you can, you know, just have that place of um, comfort 